Welcome to the Tech Talks Daily Podcast, where you can learn and be inspired by real-world examples of how technology is transforming businesses and reshaping industries in a language everyone can understand. Here is your host, Neil C. Hughes. Welcome back to the Tech Talks Daily Podcast. Now, over the last year, we've seen a rapid increase in the number of cyber attacks on cloud environments, especially with breaches having potentially disastrous consequences. And this rise has led to the CISA releasing guidance and legislation on how to improve cloud security. However, the issue of securing cloud environments does not have to be as complex as it's sometimes made out to be. Because far too many breaches are a result of organisations relaxing their security settings on cloud resources. And therefore, what extra security checks and training should organisations be implementing to reduce that risk of a breach? Well, today, Gadi Nayor, VP of Software Engineering at Cloud Security at Rapid7, he's going to join me on the podcast to talk about why cloud security doesn't need to be a complex problem as once thought and much more. So with the scene set, I want you to buckle up and hold on tight because I'm going to beam your ears all the way to Israel so we can speak with today's guest right now. So a massive warm welcome to the show. Can you tell the listeners a little about who you are, what you do, and maybe share your origin story too and what put you on this path? I have been around cybersecurity for more than 20 years. Started my career at Checkpoint doing like, you know, the traditional data center security the type of product. So uh, whether this was like uh, VPN, firewalls, intrusion prevention systems. And I was very, very lucky to move from, you know, different product teams uh, and get to experience, you know, some of the uh, world largest customers that Checkpoint uh, had and still have today. Um, and then from there, I did a little twist in in the plot for me and, and moved to a more business oriented uh, role um, doing the technological business relationship at Checkpoint, I realized that this was something that I was like, I had mixed feelings about that. So uh, at some point I returned to like, uh, you know, kernel engineer joined a startup that built distributed firewalls uh, for uh, VMware systems back in the day. So this was like the heart of, of uh, emerging sector of or, or uh, niche of security for virtualized data center that company got acquired. So I was like part of the founding engineering team there. Um, and it was acquired by Juniper. So I had kind of the experience of both large corporates and, um, you know, startup, uh, even a successful one, which is, uh, you know, the unusual. And then after a few years at Juniper and, and when containers and cloud native and cloud became uh, something that evidently is something that, you know, is going to happen it felt right to kind of move on and 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 start a company around uh, container security, Kubernetes security, which came later, all the way to the point where um, I'll see it, which was with the startup that I founded with uh, with my partner a few years back, got acquired by uh, Rapid7. And here we are today, you know, joining forces around cloud security, which is the broader uh, kind of problem space that that we are trying to address in terms of the security and, and and everything in between in the cloud. Wow, what an incredible journey you've been on there. There's so much I'm looking forward to talking with you to, about today because, as you said, that path led you to Rapid7. And one of the things I wanted to explore today was why cloud security does not need to be a complex problem as as many in the business le- uh, many business leaders may have thought. So can you tell me more about the problems that you solve with your technology at Rapid7, just to set the scene and offer an overview of what you guys do? Yeah, I think the honest answer here is that cloud is very powerful in the sense that, you know, you have a lot of options to build and, and, and deliver services or leverage, you know, cloud services for, you know, business analytics or, or whatnot. So it is a complex in the sense that there are a lot of options to do many things. Uh, but with that being said, if you take a systematic approach and 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 in a lot of ways build a program where you build your cloud assets on 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 best practices, um, it doesn't have to be that complex. 
Uh, but I think that, you know, over, over the years, we've realized that uh, different organizations and teams um, weren't able to pick, you know, the right, the right path or, or not always managed to understand, you know, the nuances of like cloud configuration and what does it mean to run your cloud workloads and operate you know, a cloud environment or deliver up business applications from the cloud environment, which means that there are challenges about, you know, first of all, building those applications. And the other part is securing those applications becomes becomes something that is relatively uh, complex or at least perceived as, as something that is complex. But if you have like the right tools and processes and and and, and skills in, in a team that uh, kind of take you to the cloud, then it shouldn't be something that, you know, puts uh, organization at, at, at a challenge or, or risk for that matter. So for any business leader listening anywhere in the world, what sectors are most vulnerable to cloud misconfigurations, would you say? Is it isolated to certain industries or is it right across the board? Uh, so cloud is not industry specific, so I would say it's across the board. Yeah. And normally you, would, you wouldn't you would want, so I, I mean, if you look at like data and, and business data is one of the uh, most important crown jewels of 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 the business or, or organization, then this is where you know you would want to put your efforts in terms of like uh, putting some fences around your data and and uh, we've all heard about you know and in 2021 uh, we've had at Rapid Seven uh, a, a very extensive research about cloud misconfiguration. There were 68 publicly disclosed breaches in 2021 from you know the well, the most known brands in 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 the world that that were that were suffering from that. But when you really think about, you know, what the nature of those misconfigurations. So, eventually, those are misconfigurations that were able that enabled threat actors to access data, like customer data, and and you know, there is a very high toll in terms of like both regulation, but not only regulation, but also like. Uh, perception of of how well a brand takes care of of its customer data um those were like the main the main challenges for organizations to kind of keep their data separate from from you know threat actors so that's where businesses normally would put their emphasis in like making sure that you know they get data into the cloud or 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 um serve customers from the cloud and and getting access to customer data is to make sure that the data is 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 found in a properly configured uh environment and it's not always easy to achieve that within the cloud but there are enough tools today that can help you know drive that uh data into a safe place in general and, and constantly and something I was also reading about was how data breaches in the cloud can actually result in many, many furthermore attacks. I mean, is, is that something you can expand on as well? Yeah, absolutely. So think about think about even yourself. Like, let's say that uh, you lost your phone, and then you need to reset your password, and or or so you call uh, customer service for you know some of the services that you are using, and and that is leveraging. Uh, you know, your data or, or, or mobile phone, for example, to access your data. And if you don't have your phone for the uh, multi-factor authentication with uh, a callback or, or a text message, then they would ask you uh, some security questions. And those security questions would normally contain information about you as a citizen, uh, date of birth, first car, things like that. And if this type of data is lost in a breach, that very specific data can be used, you know, against specific individuals when it comes to accessing other services that they are using. So mainly it revolves around that. It's not always about, you know, uh, financial crime. I mean, yes, of course, losing uh, credit card information or anything of that sort can lead to... Um, uh, crime that has a financial nature. I mean, this is a very large and, and, and compelling reason for threat actors to leverage, you know, data that involves uh, financial data like credit cards, but it's not limited to that. I mean, the ability to leverage um, information about individuals is something that, you know, an attacker can take that and use that as a leverage for social engineering or, or even like 
social engineering through um, you know emails and things like that. So so it's definitely something that is is a a a building block for further um, exploitation of that uh, data. And when I was doing a bit of research on this before you came on the podcast, I also read that in many cases, organizations themselves have actually helped contribute to the risk and attacks. Can you tell me more about that? So when, when you think about organizations and, and, and how they contribute to that, so uh, it can be with the way that they, they store or, or handle you know their their digital side of the business or or, or customer data. So and if if this is something that is done in a less responsible way, this is definitely something that has a broader impact. But the flip side of it uh, revolves around the fact that if a breach already occurred, how fast can an organization uh, can basically make or resolve that breach within a reasonable time? And and we have seen. Uh, as part of that research that uh, most breaches are resolved within one month. But if you think about it, like one month of access to customer data can be something that, you know, a threat actor can leverage in the sense that they can extract a lot of sensitive data from uh, from an organization. So the ability to respond to breaches or identify them and, 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 res- and respond responding in a timely manner fashion it's definitely something that you know organizations can can take themselves in a way to uh kind of reduce the the risk once the the such risk introduced in in, in a cloud environment for example and i appreciate this is a pretty big question and it's probably one you get asked a lot but what can organizations do more of to ensure that cloud misconfigurations are resolved and and have a more proactive uh, approach to stop things like this happening in the first place? So f- first of all, misconfiguration is one area within the broader uh, notion of cloud security that needs to be addressed. And this is normally what uh, organization would begin with. And specifically, I would say that uh, or, uh, it starts with education. Uh, you want to go cloud responsibly in a lot of ways. So before you leverage cloud, make sure you understand like what you can and cannot do. Uh, and I'm sure teams that you know are going through this digital transformation are going through this process. But because you know the uh, cloud enable you so many options to build things in a new fashion or way uh, or go cloud native, um, you want to make sure that you have enough skill on the team that actually drives this uh, digital transformation. The other part uh, for ensuring that, you know, misconfiguration are resolved is around guardrails, which like like cloud security guardrails in the sense that you want to have security scans in place because there are so many moving parts in, in, in cloud and in, in how, how you build cloud native applications. Uh, there are security tools that enable, enable you to, to put guardrails in the sense that misconfiguration would never reach your production environment or environment that has like customer sensitive data. Um, you just need to make sure that those tools, whether they are open source or commercial tools are being applied in a way that um, can bring visibility and unfold some of the complexities that uh, uh, you know cloud environment introduces, and also make sure that you know misconfiguration is not introduced as part of those changes uh, for teams that are building those cloud applications. The other part revolves around, and again, going back to the part that cloud normally involves many moving parts and may, many security knobs that needs to be uh, taken care of upfront. So having part of the way that you go to cloud, um, having security automation. So for example, if someone uh, make sensitive data or data um, is being publicly exposed, then if there are there is a security automation that automatically shuts down any instance of cloud uh, of cloud data or data that resides in the cloud, um, this is a way to kind of respond way faster than uh, you know the one month uh, breach resolution that we've seen. Uh, as part of the research. So these are the three main areas, education, having like security guardrails in place for all the cloud 
assets that are being you know provisioned into the cloud and then security automation on the response side and as someone that's working right in the heart of this space are there any other trends that you're monitoring or seeing or or monitoring closely yeah and 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 so first of all the the, the answer is definitely yes and, and and i'll i'll dig into uh into that in in a second but over the years and and i've seen that you know the cloud adoption and the way the teams are leveraging cloud and the um, level of expertise that teams had in order to leverage cloud it changed over the years and and naturally the the shift or the focus area is is changing and and what we're seeing today there are two areas that you know beyond misconfiguration are are uh, are quite uh, important the first one revolves around remediation so think about it uh, many security tools, whether open source or commercials, are very good at uh, pointing out about problems that uh, are in your cloud environment. So whether this is misconfiguration or even uh, um, threat detection, but they're not very good at helping security teams to resolve those issues. So remediation becomes a very important part of like how can you keep your security technical depth if you if you if you want to like uh, call it like that uh something that doesn't increase or grow over time so kind of keeping the problem under a very tight control and then the other part which i'm not a very very big fan of of uh, uh how marketing coined that like shifting left but mainly the notion behind it is like putting more responsibility and tools at the hands of the team that are building, uh, you know, components or applications or, or whatnot that are going into the cloud, putting more security tools and responsibility in their hands to the level where security problems or misconfiguration for that matter are addressed way before things get into production. So it can be uh scanning cloud deployment resource. It can be even fixing vulnerabilities in code, fixing things in the supply chain. So there are a lot of things that happen way before things land in your cloud environment and the production environment where um, you know there are more tools, more commercial tools, more best practices that uh, organizations can actually leverage uh, within that. And what about yourselves and Rapid7? What's your big focus? Is there anything you can share on on what you're working on right now and, and how you're helping businesses be safer? Absolutely. So to me, luckily or, or not, uh, cloud security is such a huge area that contains a lot of challenges because there are so many stakeholders that are actually involved in making you know cloud be meaningful and valuable for business organizations. So that's definitely one area of focus that I was in and still going to stay in that area. More specifically, uh, these days I'm more focused on cloud threat detection. So these are the challenges that mainly involves the what happened from a security standpoint after you deployed and provisioned to your cloud and after you handled like misconfiguration properly. So, uh, and it's mainly involved with understanding whether you know something was breached inside your cloud environment and what are the actions that you can have or, or even security monitoring tools that you can have in order to detect that and 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 prevent that and remediate that so that's a great area of focus uh for me personally from from a professional standpoint and then as far as rapid 7 goes i think that you know rapid 7 has made a uh, significant investment in in bringing cloud security uh, to Rapid Seven. We all we are all familiar with you know challenges that uh, security um, uh, businesses and, and organizations have with closing the security achievement gap. So rather than you know growing your security technical depth, is something that you know Rapid Seven can help teams shrink that. And cloud is is a great area of focus for us, as well as you know the traditional um, security um, technologies around you know vulnerability management and and uh, incident response and and the services around that. So all together, you know, helping pretty much organizations close the security achievement gap in in a valuable and meaningful way. 
Absolutely love that. And we began the podcast today talking about your origin story. What put you on this path? And as we come full circle, I'm now going to ask you that Well, none of us are able to achieve success without a little help along the way. So I'm going to ask you, is there a particular person that you're grateful towards, somebody that maybe helped get you where you are, put you on the path that you're on right now that we can uh, give a shout out to? All right. So, yeah, definitely. So I think that before, like a few years into uh, starting Alcide, which was our um, Kubernetes security company, I was lucky to have uh, Amira Aroni joining us as as a chairman and and basically, you know, throughout the journey that we had until until we got acquired by Rapid7, he, to me personally, was like pivotal in in a lot of ways with the way that he kind of approached uh, some of the challenges that we had as a startup in an emerging technology and in in relatively emerging market. Um, So... It was mainly around, you know, sometimes how the questions you would present and ask that help us get, you know, our thoughts together with with the challenges that we had. And, and, you know, God knows that within a a startup, uh, it's like a roller coaster. Um, Sometimes you kind of experience this like rush in your guts. And then sometimes you like uh, getting to experience the, the breeze when you're up high. So uh, I think that Amira only was like... Uh, uh, something that was helping me and and us navigating through this like challenging um, um, you know roller coaster rides. Absolutely love that. And before I let you go, for anyone listening, just wanting to find out more information about Rapid Seven and explore any of the topics we talked about today, or even contact a member of your team if they've got any questions. What's the best starting point? So LinkedIn is definitely, um, you know, I can be reached there personally. Rapid7 is 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 live and, and kicking within LinkedIn. And then our website, you know, you can hit uh, rapid7.com slash research and see some of the um, research paper that, you know, our team's putting uh, together, which are quite uh, intriguing and interesting, especially in, in the context of cloud and, 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 and threat in general. I guess that would be pretty much the the main the main channel, you know, website, LinkedIn, Twitter um, are, are a good go tos to get more and connect. Awesome. Well, I'll have those links to the show notes so people can find you nice and easily. And I can't thank you enough for coming on here and discussing why cloud security doesn't need to be as complex as many business leaders might have thought. And more than anything, though, for sitting down with me, sharing your story, the journey you've been on and where you're going to. Uh, and also giving a, a thank you to someone that helped you put you where you are today, too. So just thank you for sharing that with me today. Absolutely. Thank you. I really appreciate it. Wow, we covered a lot there, didn't we, in just 30 minutes from which sectors are most vulnerable to cloud misconfigurations and how data breaches in the cloud can result in further attacks, not to mention how organizations themselves, have, let's uh, let's face facts here, have helped contribute to the rise in attacks, including relaxing security settings and deploying unencrypted instances into the cloud. But I'm curious, is there anything that you would like to add to today's conversation? You've heard from me and you've heard from today's guest, but this is a dialogue, not a monologue. So I'm keen to get your views shared on this podcast too. And you can do that by simply emailing me, techblogwriteroutlook.com, Twitter, LinkedIn, Instagram at Neil C. Hughes. Let's keep this conversation going and maybe we can all learn something from each other every single day and on that front a big thank you for listening as always i hope you join me again tomorrow and until next time don't be a stranger thank you for listening to the tech talks daily podcast with neil c hughes remember technology works best when it brings people together